old turnip says 26 and one-fifth seconds. Let me see that. Mammy, is that fast or is that fast? Right the first time. You know what that means, pal? It means we've got tomorrow's race in the bag. In the old dough bag. <laughs> we've got a small chance. Chance? Chance? Oh, stop. You're killing me. Hey, Pop, can I sit behind the wheel? I'd rather you wouldn't, son. Oh, go on. Let him. All right. Gee, say. Say, Ed, why not you stop being an old lady with that kid? Because I don't want him to have anything to do with the racing game. Be a grease monkey like me? Grease monkey? Well, you're the best mechanic in the game. Yeah? Well, I want to give that kid a real break in life. Listen, Mark. I never told you, but I'm planning to send that kid to a fine military school. Before his mother died, I promised her I would. And if we win tomorrow, he goes. Gee, that's great, Ed. The military school will do that kid a lot of good. Now I know we're gonna win. Hey, get out of the way, you or I'll run you down. Hey, look out, I'm coming around. Hey, get out of the way. <laughs> well, so long, Mark. So long, Ed. See you all of a sudden. Move over, son. We put this baby to bed so she get a good night's rest for tomorrow. I'll be up in a minute, Pop. I want to talk to Tubby. I've got some important business to talk about. Well, all right, son. But stay away from the rest of that gang. Hello, Tubby. Hello. Where'd you get the football and all the other stuff? It's my birthday and Mom took me down to the 5 and 10. Look, I got marbles, too. Look, here's that knife you always wanted. I'll play a game of marbles. My knife against your top. Okay. All right. Come in. Oh, Cone. Hello, Ed. What's the matter with you? You don't look your usual self today. Ah, I had more trouble with the tenants today. I'm telling you our janitor's life is the worst life in the world. <laughs> oh, Ed, <laughs> here is a letter came for you today. There was three cents postage due and I paid for it. <laughs> oh, Ed. Oh, Ed, never Come mind. Come on that. and take it. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you. Oh, I see. It's from the military academy, huh? <laughs> Say, Ed, did you tell Jimmy about it yet, huh? Not yet. But that's where he goes, if we win tomorrow. If? Ed, please don't say if. It gives me geese pimples. <laughs> Ed, you couldn't lose, would you? Well, there's always that chance. Oh, a chance of me getting apoplexy. <laughs> Why, what's up? What's up? Everything I got is up. I got five up with Harris, and I got three up with the Delicatessen Creeper, and I got my installment money up for the radio and the icebox, and Ed, if you lose, I wouldn't have enough left even to buy carbolic acid. Come in. Hello, Mama. Aha, so you're in here. Gibbetson again. <laughs> Look, Mr. Evans, what I made for you and Jimmy. That's doggone nice of you to go to all this trouble. It's no trouble, I assure you. You ain't got no wife or mom around to make nice things for you. So I thought Lemon maybe... Lemon pie, flea. Why didn't you make him a nice apple strudel? But we like lemon pie, don't we, Mrs. Cohen? See what I told you? I'll say, if you like lemon pie, you can eat it. I know when I eat lemon pie, I always got to take my bobbin at the soda to bring up the gastritis. But apple strudel like Mama makes, I could eat like herring by the wholesale. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Look at Pop, a swell football, all these. 
One of these things here, you look through and see pictures. Where did you get all this stuff? Oh, I was just showing Tubby how to play marbles. Where'd you get this, Pop? Say, Jimmy, huh? you would like to go there maybe, ain't it, huh? <laughs> oh, boy, would I. Go on, Ned. Tell him about it, will you? Go on. If we win that race tomorrow, you go. You mean it, Pop? Can I sure? Yep, sure. Gee, look at the swell buildings. And look, there's all the boys in their uniforms. Don't they look great? And they have horses to ride and a swimming pool. Say, is it really that you can see through this thing, pitch kids? Sure, you gotta look through it and turn it till you see the picture. Oh. Say, what's the matter? I can't see nothing. I can't see even one pitch cake. Jake, you look so comical. You're telling me that I look comical? Time, no. I don't want any reporters. I want towels. More towels. Am I to understand you want towels, Mr. Sherrod? This is Mr. Sherrod's apartment, isn't it? Why, yes, miss. Well, I'll take the towels. I'm going right in. Thank you, miss. Don't mention it. Who's there? Your towels, sir. Well, it's about time. Just toss them inside the door here. Very good, sir. I stand here freezing my ears off while you make up your mind to bring towels. Right here on the Royal Rack, old knight of the band. What the? I say, you're not the maid. You didn't order a maid, sir. You ordered towels. Well, who are you? Anne Merritt of the Morning Eagle. A crying out loud, a soft sister. Yes, but not crying out loud. Listen, palsy Walsy. how about that interview? Well, I'm in the bath. Why not? In here, you'll at least give me the half-naked truth. Oh, please, I can't stand here all day. But I can, and I intend to, until I get that interview. Will you kindly your other... Kindly what? Wait out in the other room. And get the interview? With that smile? Yes. Now, wait it, will you, sister? I'm chilled to the ears. Ooh. I am playing melodies just for you. I'm awfully sorry to bother you. But I just had to interview the greatest racing driver in the world. Come on. How about my story? Okay, sit down. Once upon a time, there were three Irishmen. Now, these three Irishmen... Yes, went to the I know. Hart, Schaffner, and Marx. <laughs> oh, please, let's be serious. How long have you been in the racing business? About five years. How old are you? Old enough to know better. Give me that notebook. Now then, your name is Anne Merritt? So far. How old are you? Same answer as yours. Hmm. And uh, what is your telephone number? I think you better give me back my notebook. Now to continue. Mr. Sherrod, what does a great racing driver usually do the night before an important race? He makes a date with a very interesting girl reporter. Takes her out to dinner. Really, Mr. Sherrod? This is a business call. Let's combine business and pleasure. I have another dinner date for tonight. Well, that's easy. Break it. Oh, I couldn't do that. 
Didn't your chief order you to get this interview? Why, yes, but... There's only one way you can get it, and that's over the dinner table. I simply can't do it. I made this date last Tuesday, and it's impossible for me to get out of it. I've been trying to tell you. It's a pretty tough life you report us, lead. Having to dash about interviewing people at all hours like this. A working gal must... Eating, aren't you? <laughs> Evening. Have your reservation? There's Larry Winston, the Keyhole Reporter. By the way, how did you ever get rid of that other dinner date? Those little white lies. I told him I had a headache. <laughs> well, it's better to have a headache than a pain in the neck. I should say so. <laughs> You're not sorry about breaking that other date, are you? Some. But I had to bring my, my doctor along. Mr. Sherrod, Mr. Winston. How do you do? How do you do? Really, Larry, I'm awfully sorry. But I had to interview Mr. Sherrod. Business is business. Well, how is business? Not bad. So you're High Gear Sherrod, the world famous dirty eating racer. In the flesh. And you're Keyhole Winston. Boys, please. Well, Anne, I'll see you later. And you too. I'll bet he doesn't shave himself for fear of cutting his own throat. Really, I think you have him all wrong. He's not a bad sort. Anything. What? I haven't got that interview yet. Going great. Now, please, you promised. Okay, sure. Do you think you'll win tomorrow? Do you think your paper will publish tomorrow? Oh. Such confidence reminds me of Mahatma Gandhi's safety pin. Uh. I've got more confidence than that. <laughs> <laughs> If Ed was my own fish and blood. Yes. Oh, Mr. Ed! Ed! You who? The cars are coming up to the starting line. At the pole in number four is Cannonball Smith. Next to him in number seven is Ken Doyle, who was runner up at Indianapolis last spring. There's Mark Sherrod. I'll switch you down to the pitch now. Give him a good introduction, Larry. What, after last night? I should say not. Please, give him a break and our dinner date's on again. Well, if you insist on bribing me, okay. Coming up to the line now is Mark Sherrod, the chief contender for the championship. The boys call him High Gear Sherrod, because when he starts rolling, he has to throw it in reverse to stop. Don't 
worry, Mama, he wouldn't lose. He'll win so sure as Christmas comes right after New Year's. Last time I'm at Are you or are you not going to dinner with me tonight? I can't. It's impossible. What are you stopping for? I'm not going to move this car another inch until you promise. Oh, Mark, be reasonable. You know I've got to keep my date with Larry just this one time. But you're going to have dinner with me tomorrow night. All right. And Thursday night, and Friday night, and... Say, so can't you do anything else but take me to dinner? Sure. I can take you to breakfast. Oh, but I always eat my breakfast at home. I know it. What would you do if I were to kiss you right on the tip of your nose? I'd call you right down. About two inches. Look, look! He's passing number six! God, I've gone to the funeral. There, there, Jimmy. Mr. Sheriff thought it was best for you to stay right here. But I wanted to see my pop again. Now, don't I, Jimmy, dear. Your father would want you to be a brave boy. This is cool. Mm, that's a good boy. Him. Couldn't we? Couldn't we? Did us? Why not? Oh, Papa dear, that would make me so happy. Oh, you know, Mama, 
how all these years I was wishing if we only had a little boy chick of our own. Oh, hello, hello Mr. Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Sheriff. Hello, Uncle Mark. Hiya, kid. <laughs> Mr. Sherrod. <laughs> I'm so glad that you came, Mr. Sherrod, because Mom and me, we was talking it over about Jimmy, and we thought that, uh, uh, we thought that... Uh, that maybe. That's just what I came to tell you about. If it's all right with Jimmy, the two of us will stick together. What do you say? Gee, that'll be great. And I've got it all fixed for you to go to that military school. You mean I can go? Oh. You're not kidding me. No, sir. That's where your pop wanted you to go. And as your new pop, that's where I'm going to send you. Oh, come on. Look. Look at all the buildings here. Here's the football field, the swimming pool. Here's all the horses that the kids have to ride. Gee, that's great. Pop was gonna send me there. Gee, wouldn't he be glad he knew I was going? <laughs> Papa dear, you're crying. <laughs> Who's crying? I ain't crying. <laughs> I just catched a little cold last night. Do I go right away? Well, uh, they open in about a week or ten days. Meanwhile, how would you like to come down to my hotel and stay with me? And that's well, George? Sure. You bet. All right, come on, let's get your clothes packed up. Papa, that sounds like our bell. See who's is it. All right, Mama. Yes, gentlemen. You, Mr. Cohn? Why, uh, what is it you want? We're from the Easy Payment Furniture Company. Well, uh, Mr. Cohn, he ain't here. He went away a long time ago. Hey, you can't get away with that sort of stuff. I know you from last summer. Come on, open up that door. Gentlemen, this is a private reticence. And you cannot come into a private reticence unless you got a warrant. And if you ain't got a warrant, you cannot come into a private reticence. That's what the law says, and I got a cousin, he's a lawyer. Oh, yeah? Well, open up. All right, boys. Come on, let's get that refrigerator. Gentlemen, I'm telling you for the last time, I got a cousin, he's a lawyer, and he'll get you on a charge of habeas corpus. Oh, just a minute. that radio? The radio ain't here no more. My wife took it to have the tubas fixed. installments it can't be called stealing. You put those things right back in there. For $13.20, we'll do it. I got the money. Put it in there. Mama, you got it. I got it. And you get it. Now push back the ice box in the original position. Put anything in the pockets. Gee, 
I don't know how I'd get along without that? pocket. What's that? Oh, it's just little that you look through and see pictures. Well, we're very pleased to have the young man with us, and we'll do our best to make him happy. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, Niger. Bye. Goodbye. What's the matter? Are you sick? Howard, I'm all through. What do you mean? I'm through with racing. I'll never drive another race. I've lost my nerve. Ah, oh, snap out of that now. Why, you're all right. There ain't a thing wrong with you that a good night's sleep won't cure. Why, tomorrow you'll feel like... I tell you I'm through. Hello, Brownie? Hiya, kid. Say, Brownie, I'm in a tough spot and need 500 quick. Can you let me have it? Gee, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm overdrawn myself. I help you, pal, but the wife's lawyer tied up every cent I've got. Sorry, fella, you flatter me. Thanks for the compliment, though. Yeah, this is Frank Weeks. What? Oh, gee, I'm sorry, but I'm flatter than a pancake. Say, why don't you call up Frank Weeks? He won over 2,000 at the gambling joint last night. Excuse me, wrong apartment. Oh, Mr. Korn! Oh, that is you, Mr. Sherrod. <laughs> I thought it was a shooting gallery. <laughs> ah, come on in. Thank you. Sit down, Mr. Korn. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sherrod, you're, you're leaving here? Yeah, I've got to get out of this place. It's too expensive. But uh, I had an idea that you big racing drivers, you made lots of money. We do. But when you lose your nerve, you can't anymore. 
Oh, so that's it, huh? That's too bad. So you ain't gonna race anymore, huh? Nope. I've gotta get out of here and get me a job. But where are you gonna live? I don't know. But I'm leaving. Mr. Sherrod, <laughs> you... I hope you wouldn't take no offenses if I mentioned this, but... Why don't you come and live at my house? I got an extra room for you. <laughs> and do I have to tell you about my mama's cooking? Say, that's a swell idea. That'd be a great hideout, too. All right, I'll go with you right now. Oh, that's fine. As soon as I get the rest of my things packed up. Go right ahead, I'll wait for you. Say, Mr. Sherrod, how about little Jimmy? If you ain't got no money, how could you keep him in such an expensive school? I'll do it somehow. I'll keep that kid in school if I have to get a job driving a taxi. He's the most careful taxi driver we've ever found. Oh. Very good, young man. You may keep the change. I've taken your number so we can call for you again. Uh, thank you. Hey, buddy. Say, uh, this is a pretty good spot. I've had my eye on it for several days. What's chances of using it as a regular stand? Well, uh, there's several of the boys here already, but uh, it could be arranged. I got gotcha. you. All right, how much? Oh, about ten. Every ten? once in a while. Ten? Yeah. All right. Just back in the line. Okay, Admiral. I'll take care of it. Right around the back. Mug, you don't belong on this stand. Scram. You'll have to see the Admiral. Listen, Bo, there's eight of us been on this stand for months, and we don't take no competition. Get me? See the Admiral. You heard what I said. You know, little boys shouldn't play with matches. That's that. Oh, yeah? Where to? Oh, I see. You sure? Okay, thanks. He checked out and didn't even leave a forwarding address. Do you mean to tell me you haven't heard from him at all? Not a word. He called me up to go out to dinner with him last Tuesday and never showed up. What a dumb door I've been. Well... Well, little one, what are you looking so bright and cheerful about? It's the weather, I guess. Well, what do you say we step out? That's not a bad idea. When do we start? Right now. Let's start early and finish late. Fair enough. I just had a talk with the Major. You men better be on your toes tomorrow. It's business day, don't forget. My dad said he was coming out. My folks are coming out, too. How about your Uncle Mark, Jimmy? No, nah, he wrote me he had an important business engagement and he can't get away. Gee, I'd like to be a racing driver when I grow up, but shucks, my dad wants me to be a banker. Think your Uncle Mark will win the championship this year? It's a cinch. 
He's the greatest racing driver in the world. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the greatest racing driver in the world. And does he drive in big races like Ascot Midland and Indianapolis? I'll say he does. Why, last year when he won the big race at Indianapolis, huh? Last year at Indianapolis, Uncle Mark was three laps behind and only about 20 miles left to go. And you know what he did? Says you. You and your Uncle Mark. Well, you can razz me and get away with it, but you can't razz my Uncle yeah. Mark. Come on, that away. Get in there. Come on, Jimmy. As I was saying, my Uncle Mark's the greatest racing driver in the world. Right. Would you call me a taxi, please? Do you know where the Urban Military Academy is? Aye, I do. You'd better wait for me. Oh, come on. Snap out of it. Maybe your Uncle Mark will come. No, I told you he had important business to attend to. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And how is my darling boy? I'm fine, Mother. Let's go out into the garden. Oh, Mr. Sharon. Just thought I'd drop in and give you the balance of the account. All right, thanks. You still up the racetrack? Still behind the wheel. Anxious to see Jimmy? Yeah. He's right here in the library. All right, thanks. Who are you looking for, sir? Jimmy. Hey, gang, here's my Uncle Mark. He came after all. How you doing, Jerry? Hello, boys. Tell us about the last race at Indianapolis. Here, do you, Jimmy? Yes, sir. I'm having a swell time. I'm learning a lot, too, Uncle Mark. <laughs> Gee, it's great of you to do this for me. Uh, I'm working hard at my lessons and everything. Atta boy, Jimmy. Go to it. I'll try to get down next visitor's day. I've got to hurry now. So long, Jimmy. Bye, Uncle Mark. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Miss. I... Hurry, uh... please. I must get back to town. Thank you. Taxi. Mr. Houdini, so you thought you could disappear completely. How did you get here? I always get my man. I located you through your license number. Oh. And I suppose as a representative of the good old Morning Eagle, you're all set to do a sob story of the once famous racing driver who has now become uh, a tramp. Wrong as usual. If you remember, we had a dinner date, and I'm here to keep it. You mean that this is... Purely social. Even if you did stand me up. A dinner's a dinner. And just try and get away from me. Uh, let's sit down. They're going to our picture show. Mama, I don't want to see any pitch case. Mm, Dunka, don't you know they want to be alone? I know, but honestly, Mama, I've been standing on my feet all long, and if I walk another block, they'll drop off. What? Moe's Ginsburg is having a pinochle game. A pinochle game? Sure. And he wants you to come right over. Quick, Mama, get your hat and coat. Sure. I'll be ready in a minute. <laughs> Where are you going? Why, we're just going to pay a little social visit to some friends. Your dinner is keeping hot on the stove. And there's plenty for the young lady, too. Thanks, that's fine. I got something special for you tonight. <laughs> something ex-special. Make yourselves at home. <laughs> Come on, Mama. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. I'll see you later. Do you really mean it? That you forgive me for... Oh, cut out the chatter. Let's get going. I'm starved. That makes two. Let's go. And the kid is just crazy about that school. He's learning quite a lot, too. I think it's wonderful of you to take care of him like this. Well, it was the only right thing to do. And besides, I get a bigger kick out of it than he does. There, the last one. Huh. Well, a perfect score. Not a busted dish. Don't stop bragging. It's bad luck. <laughs> And it'll be worse luck for me if I don't get right down to the office and turn my copy in. Oh, we'll fix that. Taxi lady? Yes, sir. So listen, ma'am. You won't say anything about this to anybody, will you? I mean, uh, I don't want to let it get out that I'm... Oh, silly, of course not. Mark, how about trying some my cooking on Friday? So... Bye. Goodbye. Okay. Oh, Ann. Hello, beautiful. Evening, Larry. Say, who was the curbstone gondolier? He looked familiar to me. Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, well, I would, but I just can't place him for the moment. Don't even try. Wait a minute. I've got it now. Sheridan. Mark Sherrod himself driving a taxi cab. Holy mackerel, is that a kick? Larry! Larry! Not a word about this. Boy, gal, this is news. Yes, I know. But don't tell anybody about it. It just wouldn't do to have it get out. Larry, as a friend to me, please don't. Well, I... 
Well, if you put it that way, of course I won't. Oh, Larry, thanks. That's all right. Thanks a lot. Hey, I got to go out here, girl. I just got to talk to the day. You'll promise. Stack of Bibles, cross my heart, and all that sort of thing. I won't breathe a word about it to anybody. Not a soul. This is Larry Winston talking, the Morning Eagle reporter of the air. I have some choice bits of news for you today. That's that from all Winston fellow from the Eagle. World. I'll tune in on something else. Yeah, the hot one I just picked yeah. up last night. Of interest to everybody who has followed motor racing for the last five years. There are heroes in every line. Mr. Cohn, wait a minute. Let's get motor this. Motor racing all right. Cole You've all seen or heard of high gear sheriff. Listen, fellas. He's talking Bob about Blanc Omar. As you know, was one of the greatest racing drivers we ever had. He won the 500 mile classic at Indianapolis last year. See, I told and you. Within 15 points of being national champion this year. That's my Uncle Mark. Well, it seems that when they fall, they fall hard, and they never bounce back. Now, this old sheriff, it seems, has lost his nerve, turned yellow. And what do you think he's doing now? The one-time hero of a hundred races is now driving a taxi cab. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Drive a taxi. Chosen probably to harmonize with the streak up his back. Uh, yelling. <laughs> a yelling. <laughs> Where are you going? You'll have to excuse me. I'm going downtown on business. Thanks very much for the lunch, Mrs. Cohn. That's but so you funny. didn't eat nothing. Listen, Mr. Sheridan, don't let that Winston fella get your gout. Oh, I'll be back. What's the matter, Jimmy? Afraid to face the bunch? No, I'm not afraid to face a bunch. Oh, I could stand the Rasn all right. It's Uncle Mark. You heard what the announcer said. Driving a taxi. He can't really keep me here. Don't you see? I guess you're right. Gee, that's too bad. I'm gonna miss you. Here, too. So long, pal. So long. Have you seen Evans around? He's not here, sir. And that, folks, is all for today. What's the matter? I think you're the lowest thing I've ever known in my life. My well, little one, you're all steamed up. How could you, after promising me faithfully you wouldn't? Wouldn't what? Oh, don't crawl. You know what I'm talking about. Mark Sherrod. Business is business, my dear. It's all in the day's work. I want to see Anne Merritt. Hey, wait a minute. I've just come down to tell you a few things. Mark, You've told plenty already. After promising me you wouldn't say a word, you come down and spill the whole thing to your little pal here. Mark, I didn't. You've got to listen You've to me. You've said enough. Now, look here. You can't talk to this lady that way. That isn't half of what I've got to say to her. Well, I won't permit it. You won't permit it. Say, I'm getting ideas about you. You handed me one. Now it's my turn. You've got to listen to me. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, I suppose your boyfriend is a mind reader. Mark, please. <laughs> Say, we warned you to keep away from that stand. You keep that junk away from there or we'll do it for you. Oh, Ann, don't be 
night, Dad. You can hardly blame him the way the thing turned out. <laughs> Mrs. Thompson from the second floor just had a baby. Yes. And what do you think? Her husband blames me. What? He blames me because their telephone is broken. He's crazy. He's drunk. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Mr. Sherrod, I'm keeping your lunch hot for you on the stove. I'm not hungry. But you have a cup of coffee anyway. Come on, Mr. Sherrod, have a little coffee. It'll heat you up. Papa, go down the corner and get a can of cream. We ain't got a bit. All yes. right, Mama. <laughs> Papa, you up? I'll be back in a jiffy. Well, well, little Jimmy. Hello, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> oh, my, I am so surprised to see you. <laughs> I thought you were still going to school. What's the matter? You got a vocation? No, I left. I've been looking for him. I couldn't find him up the hotel, so I came to you. Well, you certainly came to the right place, because your Uncle Mark is living with us now. <laughs> Gee, that's great. <laughs> Say, listen, Jimmy. I gotta run to the store. You go inside and surprise your Uncle Mark, and when I come back, I'll bring you a chocolate canvas. <laughs> Uncle Mark! Hello. What are you doing here? Well, nothing, sir. I didn't know you lived here till Mr. Cohen told me. Well, what's the idea? Well, I wanted to see you. Well, you're supposed to be in school, aren't you? Well, yes, I suppose so. Why are you here? Well, I don't like the place, Uncle Mark. I'd lots rather just be with you. But the other day you told me you were getting along fine. Well, I guess I was. But honest, the place is beginning to get on my nerves. Getting nerves? After all the shouting you did about going there? I know, but well, you see... I suppose you'd rather be hanging around down at the gas house with a gang of mugs instead of being in a fine, high-class school. Is that it? Well, Uncle Mark, it, it isn't exactly that. I, uh... <sighs> Is it? What'd he say? He wouldn't talk to me. Guess that's the end of it. Don't be silly. You've got to get to him and explain it. But he won't listen to me. Well, you know where he lives, don't you? Then go there as fast as you can and make him listen. Maybe you're right. I'll try it. You're going back to that school. I can't. Why can't you? Honest. See here, young man. You're going back. No, sir. I can't. If your dad were here, he'd slap you down. I feel like doing it myself, oh, you Mr. little... Oh, Mr. Some taxi drivers downstairs are trying to wreck your car. What? Hit him. He's 
Doctor. It's pretty bad. Call a doctor quick. Mama! Mama, quick! Telephone for a doctor. Jimmy is hurt. Jimmy. I didn't mean to yell at you. Jimmy. You don't have to go back to that school now. You can stay with me all you want to. Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, Mark, what happened? Oh, it was meant for me and the... Jimmy got it. <laughs> Did you call the doctor? He'll be here any minute Oh, now. I wish they'd hurry. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Very little chance to save him. His skull is crushed. It's a trap banning job. We must get him to the hospital quickly. It's a matter of minutes. Well, let's get going. You get in there and keep that siren going. Come on. Jimmy? Oh, I'm feeling swell, fellas. Even the doc says so. When are you coming back, pal? Most any day now. And boy, will I be glad to get back to the school. Oh, say, how's my horse? Feeling sort of lonely and is asking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Jimmy, where'd you get the swell radio? From my Uncle Mark. Marco is a present champ, but old High Gear Sherrod is going to give him a raise for his money. High Gear Sherrod wins the race with a new record the classic. What a champ. Three cheers for Jimmy's Uncle Mark. Hurrah! 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 Gee. Thanks, fellas. He won, Mama. He won. Mr. Sherrod ain't afraid no more. He uncovered his knife. Oh, Papa, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Mr. Sherrod, would you just hold that a moment, please? Will you kiss her? Just for publicity. Well, I've got a better reason than that. <laughs> 